Hey, come on. Come on. Good girl. Hey girl, look, there's the camera. See it? Good girl. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm going to be doing a lot of these shots from now on because I'm using, not using the normal camera that I um, usually use. I'm using a iPod to my brother's because mine broke. And also it'll probably be a lot worse quality. You can see, I think you can see. Hey, hey, where you at? Oh, hi. So, she's grown a lot since my last video. And this is my minimal pack. So I'll show you that right now. This is the most minimal pack that I've seen. But, it does have a few extras in it. It does have a turkey call and a deer call. The compass, which I don't really use. has a flint steel kit right there, which again, right now, it's because it's summertime. I don't really use that's the only time the only reason I'm wearing this tank top because it's so it's not nine degrees out and I cannot stand the heat so I have to wear the tank top. Oh shoot. But that is a bowl for Sage's water. This is an unusually large water canister. I didn't plan for boiling water because um, I know obviously this is disinfected because it's fossil water. But I'm not gonna be out here for long enough so that I need to boil water. But this is a nice large canister. I need to put that sage dog. So it's pretty much sage's stuff besides um obviously I use the water too. And the only thing else I have is bank line. And also I have a shit of a strike force in here. Oh yeah, I also have the strike force. Which kind I don't really use because there's a fire advisory for our, for my area because it's been so dry we, we've only had one good rain in, like, in the past three weeks or so and also I'll show you my double knife sheath I obviously customly made and no one else sells these but I made the large knife you see sage stop hey girl I made this knife it is carbon steel and so hey oh jeez sage um, but it is tarnished as you can see and I didn't clean it up because I didn't really feel like I could have time. So that's for heavy chopping. I don't have an axe and obviously here's my more, which this is actually even more tarnished. The edge, stop. Um, sorry about that. So I can always have on me at one time a small carver and a more knife. Or sorry, a chopper and a more knife. So, I did dip in the blade there because I, I like that look. But yeah, so. Deer and turkey call, I guess I went across in the wildlife. Um, two knives for different tasks. So black sheep, bank line, full roll, and a bowl for sage and water and strike force. That's really all I need. That's really all, all, all I need for now, but this video, I'm going to try and keep the talking short. I already did, did a lot of talking, but I'm going to try and do a thatched shelter that will last um, for a few months long term. Um, but I'm also going to use actual grass and I'm going to thatch it from the ground up so it's hopefully as waterproof as a survival shelter can be. But So, yeah, I'll start that. I do have a long field of grass that I can use. I def definitely will not run the grass, so choose a spot and I'll get going so stay with me.
place where it'd be. Gonna go in that tree, all the way around back to that tree. I'm gonna do the normal self holding um, cross piece with the two forks. There's my tree house over there. But, um, yeah. I'll just clear out this last log. Just have open ground. I'll do the normal thing, but then instead of pine boughs or, or any less waterproof near hero, I'm gonna actually use grass, which I know will work because they used that for hundreds of years, years back then. So, it'll probably, probably do a, be a few day project because it's not like a one, one person thing. This is a several person shelter too. So, so it'll probably take two or three days, but yeah, stay with me. Definitely not camera shy. Good girl. Good girl. Your tongue is always fucking out random places. So here's the fork system. Takes a weirdly amount of time to um, find the forks. I don't know why, but obviously all you guys know, push it against the tree, this holds it up, comes across, push it against the tree, this holds it up, and go down, make sure this is strong enough to both hold that up and the thatching up. One at one spot, um, one at one spot so I could stand, I want one spot so I can stand. I mean, it's close, close enough, but it does get lower over there because I wanted to make these two the same length. These two, um, these two cross pieces. So, but now I will start with the um, with the cross pieces, and then finally the thatching. So. I hope you enjoy. Stay with me. So I got two cross pieces up. Oh come on. Oh, let's put that down. That's why. Oh, you thing. Okay. Right. So I have two cross pieces up. Um, pretty far apart. But we have pretty tall grass in our field. For any of you who don't know about thatching, unfortunately, it's shorter than what it was. You can only bend it once, but there was more on this side. What you pretty much do is you put it up like that. Unfortunately, I only have two two arms, but you fold it over, and so it stays like that. And there was more on you know on the part part that folded over, which there usually is, just broke off because I folded and unfolded it. You tied it right here. All the rain would go down, and you know slowly filter um, down through to the ground and it would obviously block you but they yeah, have the third one right here right here I just need two more and then I'll start doing the grasses and I might I might use a different tool for that blocking the camera might use a different tool tool for that that'll just make it go faster I can obviously harvest it with my knife but it's not um, thin enough to cut through grass easily, it's also not long enough to get power to cut big wads of grass at a time, because grass is actually pretty tough, so I'm going to get a, a sigh to um, chop, chop it down with, so I can just chop a whole section down and carry it in. Hopefully be done, close to being done by today, so stay with me. So here we go. I'm done with the cross pieces. I am going to start from that one up, you know, so the rain so, it, so I can o o overlap them. Um, but yeah, and I'm all out of the water. So I'm gonna go and get the side more and more water. That sage rest, he's really tired. But I've been out here, I'm not exactly sure for how much, but I've, uh, but I've estimate, estimate about two to three hours. But there's still a lot, lot of time in the day. So I could easily finish this by tonight. Yeah, thanks for sticking around and I'll go and get the side, start cutting it and start
thatch thatching the roof. Here it is from far. It's pretty large. Probably two of us could sleep. Two per persons, people, two people could sleep in there at once. So, yeah. I'll do the shat thatching right now. The grass is straight over there. You can see it gets light. That's the end of the forest. So, yep. And I have this tool. It's not your traditional scythe, it does cut quite well. Wipes it clean. So, that's a pretty good tool. This is poison ivy, some of But now, so it's a pretty good tool so I can get enough grass quickly to thatch my shelter. I've gotten all this, you can't really tell. It's bundled in with the grass, but it's a pretty good bundle. Doing all that, that was a patch of long grass, and I just circle, circle around me. I'll carry back that back to the forest, and that should be able to do a lot of row. Hopefully. Yeah, it's pretty hot work. The sun right here, right in the middle of the field, is pretty bad. So. Okay, pretty sure I dropped some on the way. I'll just make do with this right now and get it later. There's one splash of sun on it, that's funny. But, yeah, so I'll try and show the best I can. I don't have a tripod for this, so it might be hard. I'll try and show the best I can the whole thatching process. But, yeah, stay with me. It's about this size bundle I'm going to use for now. You know, pretty thick. I might do a little bit wider. If I decide to, but I'm trying to keep in mind I'm only using one hand, so it's gonna be harder than usual to show it and do it at the same time. I'm just gonna put one thing up here, flatten it out some. Sorry, camera's on the ground, that's why it's all black. Okay, and I can bend one side over. I don't want to scoop this up. The grass. So yeah, I'm gonna bend that part over, tie it off, and that whole part will be on the part that you know makes the rain run off. So I'll do that over and over again and show it periodically down the line. So stay with me. So there's three of them. You can see three of them. Um, push those far as of pos far over as possible. And the other ones that overlap are gonna come down um, and go right here in the space. So there's no open spaces. It's all, you know, it's all contained. So I might scooch this up so that it, it overlaps more. But other than that, I think I'm pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna do that all the way down. It's gonna take time, but in the end, it's gonna be very waterproof and durable. So there you go. So, put on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
10 of those and my pile is gone. But that pile I showed you earlier in the field, I think I dropped some of it. So, you know, but it does take a lot. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So about, um, quite a lot actually. <laughs> I'll just say, say that. But definitely this will keep out the water. This is a thick in the thatch you can tell. You know, it's pretty thick so. Thank you for joining for the first part of this episode, or part slash episode thing. Um, did whole framework and ten thatching things. Um, wow, that's cool. See but yeah, I will. Um, uh, I will continue the thatching and probably spend a few nights in it in the next two three parts if you want to get this uploaded just so that I can have another video uploaded so thanks for watching I will see you next time